When designing a PS2 controller, we'll focus on the host side, and that's because devices like mouse or keyboard, they already have their own controllers, and we're not designing a new mouse or a new keyboard, we're just designing a host on that side. So we're just focused on the host controller. So taking a look at the complete system and a top overview of the whole system shows us that we only have three components in that. And those components are a typical or traditional FIFO buffer in here, a receiving system and a transmitting system in here. That's the PS2 RX and the PS2 TX. So let's dig deeper and see how the whole system actually works. Um, the FIFO is only on the, trans on the receiving side and that's because uh, the processor on here is what reads the input from the mouse or the keyboard and it might just not be reading all the time so what we do is we provide the FIFO so that it becomes like a cushion so when a mouse or a keyboard sends data and unstop it's actually saved in that FIFO however on the transmission side we do not need a FIFO and the reason why is twofold is the first is actually we don't send a lot of data we can send the PS2 host can send the device a few things to change the configuration but it's not very common and the other thing is because the processor is the one that sends, it can actually control the rate at which it's sending. So you can stop or pause or something. So you really do not need a FIFO for that matter. So we only have it in here. And the way that the processor actually read the received data is just basically using the basic FIFO interfaces with an empty flag, a read signal to actually move the pointer forward and the red data. And the way you actually write into it is actually just the, what we've seen before. It's actually a write data and a write signal in here. And you do also have a full flag if you actually want to take a look at it. So let's dig deeper a little bit in here and see what's happening. And what's happening in here is the following. The PS2 clock and the PS2D is actually only two wires because it's a serial communication protocol. And these two wires are used for sending and receiving. So the protocol does not allow us to send and receive at the same time. So it's not a full duplex protocol. It's actually just a single duplex. It's a single plex, let's call it that way. Okay, so because of that, we need to make sure that if you're receiving, you can't send, and if you're sending, you're not receiving. So the signals that will allow us to do these are the RX idle, which indicates that the receiving side is idle, is not receiving. The TX idle in here which is telling me that the transmitter is actually idle and it's not sending anything and we have a couple of enables which one here is actually rx enables enables the rx and the rx idle tells it serves like a tx enable probably a better name will be a tx enable so let's see how they're actually cross connected so in here what we have is the transmit when the transmitter is actually idle we will enable the receiver so the receiver can actually receive and similarly, when the receiver is idle, we can actually enable the TX. Frank speaking, it is called RX idle uh, because it, it's, you don't always need to enable the, RX, the, the transmitter. You just need to know that you're capable of using that or not. And you can actually, as well, the processor can check the um, transmitting whether it's idle or not. Because if it's not idle, it shouldn't be transmitting. Okay. Uh, then we take a look in here, it's actually the PS2 clock and the PS2D, they actually both, the receiver end and the transmitting end actually have these signals, so they're just connected right there. And some of it is actually in and out and some of them is input, we'll dig deeper into it when we talk about the RX and when we talk about the TX separately. And then when the processor wants to send something, it actually puts that data packet here, which is a byte in here and issues basically or assert that particular signal in here in the transmission happens. And that's a general overview of what's happening. So when that, um, basic, when the processor actually wants to send that, it actually, the transmitter, make sure that everything is okay and then sends it on this data, but following the protocol we described um, in the separate video. As opposed to when receiving, the processor, actually not the processor, but the FIFO, uh, will be receiving in here and you're receiving using the, trans the receiver side. And whenever you receive any byte, it actually, after you finish, what happens is the um, done tick in here tells me like I received a byte, it enables the write in here and you just write it and it's, it just gets stored in the FIFO and you can read it by the processor. So let's take a look at uh, how the code actually looks for this particular um, top level system and we can see it here in Vivado, it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, the main components are actually these three instantiated um, systems. It's actually one transmitting unit and or one transmitting unit, one receiving unit and a FIFO buffer. And then here is just basically just uh, we're naming these here basically and connecting them just so we give them the same name. And the more interesting thing is actually that the PS2D and the PS2C, which are basically the bus, the PS2 bus, they're in and out and they basically use the tri-state buffers in here so that they implement the open drain technology. 
the implementation is pretty straightforward. It's just connecting the wires together like this particular diagram is actually showing us.